This is Twit. I went and bought a new iPhone 7 about four or five months ago. And I, it was somewhat of a last minute purchase. And I had forgotten that they removed the headphone jack from the iPhone 7. And I was really annoyed. <laughs> uh, I like my head. I have nice headphones that plug into my headphone jack. Beyond, I was really annoyed. Let's just say that that was the beginning of a four-month project that ended up with you having yeah. a headphone jack in your iPhone 7. This is, I mean, I do annoyed like every Tuesday. <laughs> this is way beyond annoyed. This is like well, vengeance. I, yeah. I mean, I basically decided if, if they weren't going to put a headphone jack in an iPhone 7, why wouldn't, why shouldn't I? Okay, wait, well, hold on, hold on. Because I was told in all the reports that the reason why they removed the jack in the first place was that it just plain wouldn't fit. They'd made it so slim, they'd made it so small that a 3.5 millimeter jack would just bulge out of the case. Well, I read that as well, Padre. And <laughs> I thought, when I started this, I thought the headphone jack was gonna go on the back of the phone. Like I thought I was gonna make another case like for the phone. Okay. Yeah, like a bump on the back. And it wasn't until I bought another phone, I bought a used phone, uh, and I should say, this is all happening in China. So I bought a used phone in the markets in China, and I took it home and I cracked it open. And it wasn't a phone. <laughs> no, no, it was a phone. It was a phone. No, 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 the, the, the markets are actually really legit in China. I've had um, nothing but great experiences okay. in the markets. I've had no problems with people scamming me. Um, but I opened it up, and I started taking parts out, and I went, I mean, in particular, I was looking at the area where the headphone jack is in an iPhone success. And I said, what's in that corner? Like, I want to know what they put there. Because one, the, one of the things they said is, they said they removed the headphone jack because it was taking up too much room. Right. And then so, they stuffed something much bigger than a headphone jack in that space. Right. And so I wanted to know, well, what is that? What was it? It was a piece of plastic. No, wait, whoa. I was told that it was the vent for the barometric sensor. Well, I was told that too. It may and very well be a vent I'm, for a barometric sensor. I'm no barometric engineer, but I have the two parts here that they could be talking about. Uh, this is the bigger piece, and this is what I believe, at least in an article by The Verge, they said was the barometric vent. Does that look like a barometric uh, vent no. to you? Having never actually seen a barometric vent, just a barometer, I have no idea. That is a, that's a mounting post, basically, I that just lets them tack on other pieces of No, I think it's just a bracket. It oh. sits over, this is the connector here for the, so this, this has a bunch of my parts on it, but this black thing is what sits in the bottom of the phone right here, like this. And this is the, the, um, where the taptic engine connects. Mm -hmm. And this thing sits over the top of it. I think it just holds on that connector. It sits okay. like this. And I think it just holds it on. It, it screws down into two screws. I think it's just to prevent that from popping off. And they have these similar brackets all over the phone uh, that do similar things. Most of them are made of metal and they're smaller than this. Got it. And I think that this piece is actually the barometric vent they were talking about. Mm -hmm. This actually plugs into the bottom of the case over behind these holes here. Right. right? And right. I think that's what makes those holes waterproof. And I think there's some sort of membrane or something in here that allows air in and out, but not water. And that's what they were talking about. You know, before we run through the process of how you actually did this, I, I got to ask, what is your background? I mean, are you yeah. an engineer? What what drives a sane, I'm assuming you're yeah. sane, a sane person to want to I've, take I've apart a really expensive device to put something that the manufacturer hasn't included? Well, that's a great question. I, I've wondered my sanity multiple times throughout this project. Uh, I am an engineer by background, but I'm a software engineer by background. Okay. So I used to work at How Google. Hard can hard work be? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, exactly, right? Uh, I used to work at Google on web search, um, so I'm, I, uh, the, your discussion of, of yes. search results yes. is, is very uh, close to my heart. Um, and a couple of years ago, I got the opportunity to go to China as part of a hacker trip to China, uh, led by a friend of mine, Mitch Altman. And uh, I got there and I said, oh wow, this is a geek's paradise. I completely <laughs> fell in love. And I've been coming and going ever since. Cool. Um, and so, yeah, that's what's led me down this road of crazy iPhone adventures. So you have the phone. You decide it needs a headphone jack. You buy one to play around with. You yep. pull it open. You remove the barometric filter. Yep. Um, and this other piece of plastic. This other piece I of plastic. Which I don't think is what they were talking about. What happens next? <clears throat> well, I got the uh, I got a headphone jack mm -hmm. from a an iPhone 6S. This is actually one from a 5 that I ended up using. But I got one from a 6S that I had. Um, and I, I looked at it and I said, I wonder if this will fit. And I started fitting in and I went, I think there's a possibility that this will go into that hole where this piece of plastic was. Are you and this doesn't Apple seem all that. Lied about the space? Well, Apple I don't want to go that far. Apple made a choice to not take advantage of the opportunity. 
I don't know. I give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. I think I don't think that there was like a whole bunch of ill will here. I think that at some point, I think at one point maybe the iPhone 7 had a headphone jack in it. Mm -hmm. And at some point it got removed and they kind of, I suspect it was late in the design process and they kind of shuffled some things into, right. that, into that space. Um, they moved the Taptic engine over, they, um, you know, they added this clip, they had, there was a clip on top of the, on the bottom side of the screen that fits into that hole. I think everybody that, that worked in that area of the phone went, ooh, more room, yeah. like, let's hence, shuffle in there. Hence the magical uh, bracket. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. that's, that's, let's make um, sure that there's something in there so people don't say, yes. oh, there's a big empty space where right. this used to be. Right. Okay. There are plenty of other sort of theories as to what Apple's motivation was to mm -hmm. remove the headphone jack. I, I don't have a particular opinion. Um, if their only reason was there wasn't enough room, I think that I have some proof that maybe that wasn't the case. Wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's get super geeky here because this yeah. is it's not just a matter of dropping a 3.5 millimeter jack into no. the case because you have to go from digital to analog, and if they remove the headphone jack, they don't have that there anymore. Right. Yeah. The how DAC is actually currently in right. It's yes. in the dongle. So right. how did you get a DAC back into the casing? Well, that's a good question. Um, I started out pretty naive on this project. I thought maybe I would, I started poking around and I thought maybe I'd get lucky and just find like vestigial lines that I could hook up to for the headphone jack. <laughs> that was- lift the pads and I can solder the jack on there. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that Along was, with a note, uh, analog jack here. Yeah, right, exactly. It's solder here to add jack. So that didn't happen, um, obviously. That was very naive. Right. Um, so then I kind of, uh, Figured out, was trying to think like what else can I do right I bought a bunch of um, like copy adapters from the markets and they were all it they all turned out to be pretty low quality the only like DAC you know headphone adapter that I could find that was really good was the one that Apple makes that's not cheap no they're not cheap they're about nine to ten dollars they're a little bit more than that in oh, China for an Apple accessory it's cheap that's it is it's cheap for a dongle it's from true. Apple but they're yeah, really cheap, cheap until you buy like 20 of them oh and then they start to add up <laughs> I have bought a lot of these and cracked them open. But I am actually, the, I'm getting the DAC and all the headphone logic out of this plug here. And that's actually the, um, the blue board here on my circuit. He is actually wow. the inside, so it's actually that right there. Oh, it lines uh, up perfectly. It lines up perfectly, and these wires here are soldered on to where the lightning connector is. So you just tapped right off the lightning connector. Exactly. Okay. So conceptually, what I start, what the place I started was, can I just hook up this lightning adapter to the, the lightning jack. Can I just solder wires directly between those? And that took me like two or three weeks because I had to like learn how to solder that small. So I had yeah. to go buy a new microscope. I had to get fancy tweezers. I had to find the right wire. And like, so I went through, you know, probably five of these in the process and a whole bunch of these. And so you got like, really good at soldering. I got really good. No, I got really good. I now own this amazing microscope. And you have a that super fine tip soldering iron. Super fine tip soldering okay. iron, really nice tweezers, really fine wire. Um, and now I would actually say it's not that hard. It's pretty easy. I can do one of these in, um, you know, just doing the, the wiring of that, I can do it in 10 or 15 minutes and, and get it pretty right every time. Now, I know you had to strip it out of its casing yep. to, to get that in there, but was, was that, removing it from its casing, was that enough to make it clear everything it needed to clear inside the case? No. Oh. So I had other problems right at the end of the project. Well, so, okay, so the plan was to take this board, it's pretty pretty narrow this way. I thought I would be able to get that vertically in the case. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, that was just the plan, right? Now, if I was a smart person, I would have tested that. <laughs> but happened? I'm not. Okay. <laughs> so I just kind of assumed that would work. It looked like it would work. Um, I have a feeling this goes, why won't this corner go all the way snap? Yes. Okay. Ooh. So that wasn't that wasn't quite where I started. I. I I then realized, okay, I'm not gonna be able to put this vertically, so I put it actually over the top of the Taptic engine. Mm -hmm. um, so this, the Taptic engine actually goes underneath here. Um, and this, uh, so this board sits on top of the Taptic engine, okay. which is not really recommended engineering practice, right? Yeah. So I ended up having to like- <laughs> Every time you get a call, you're vibrating the components. That's, right. okay, yes, that's fine. Right, I'm sure Apple engineers are cringing when they hear this. <laughs> um, so I started like removing other protective brackets, like I started removing stuff off the screen. I started like, uh, dremeling out the case underneath the Taptic engine. I was moving the, t the Taptic I, engine I'm is like shifted. I'm starting to see why you had three phones because yes. yeah, this is a really good way to bust it. Eventually, I got to the point that everything fit in the phone, but as you said, there was like this little gap at the bottom of the phone, <laughs> right? And, I, and there were moments where I did exactly what you said where I'm like, so there are clips on the side of the phone that right. you have to clip in as you're closing the screen up and I'm closing it up and then finally it just goes crunch. Oh. And all of a sudden, like the bottom part of the screen has spider weird, webs. you know, spider webs, oh. and the the digitizer's not working we anymore. We all know that. And 
So I went through probably, I don't know, five or six screens, um, which, you know, yeah, one isn't that bad, but five or six, it starts to add up. And, and it just, it sucks at your morale. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not again! <laughs> yeah. So how did you actually manage to, did you, did you grind off enough of the epoxy over the I just too? basically removed everything that I possibly could, including all of the protective mechanisms that the engineers have put in to prevent stuff from breaking in the phone. So the last thing that I removed was actually the, the epoxy layer mm -hmm. off the top of one tiny capacitor on this board, which sticks up a little higher than everything else. Oh my and goodness. it's it's a waterproofing, I'll see if I can show the camera here. There is there is a little tiny brown dot right there, and uh, right there, and that was what was causing the screens to break. It was sticking up maybe a, fra a fraction of a millimeter. Uh, and just that enough. was just pushing on the back of the digitizer enough to crack it. So you finally figure this last element out. You get the case closed. You've got the headphone. Well, actually, the headphone jack took what, like 19 cases to figure out? No, probably like 10 to 15, maybe. Oh, oh all yeah. Right. 10 to 15. <laughs> I was lucky enough to buy a lot of used cases on the street. There are vendors that just sell used cases from, from taking apart phones. Mm -hmm. And so those were like cannon fodder for the CNC machine, like when we were dialing in all the settings. Right. Because um, they're all scratched up anyway, and I can get them for really cheap, like a dollar or two per case on the street. So oh, wow. um, you buy them in stacks of 10. So um, 15 cases later, yeah. you finally shave down the capacitor, it closes. How satisfying was it to plug the headphones in and actually hear music? It was pretty satisfying, but that moment came like weeks or months earlier. Because like I had I had everything working. As long as you yeah. didn't want to close the phone. Right. <laughs> as long as you had the phone spread out on the table. In as front as of long as right. you were okay with the components kind of just hanging by wires, it worked. Right, exactly. So I'd already had that like satisfaction moment like three or four times months ago. Right. And by that point I was just like beaten down and I was like, oh thank God I can stop closing cases. Like thank God I can <laughs> and I basically have just never opened this phone again since Why that would moment. You? Yeah, because Ever. I'm terrified. No. And you're it. never gonna update because yeah. you need to stay with this phone because you're not going to want to do that with an 8 or a 10. Right. I'm just oh, well, going to throw that out. Well, I wouldn't. Really? OK. I've had a lot of people asking me, can you do this with an 8 or a 10? And I think it's only fair to try. <laughs> <laughs> is this is so? Is this now a personal obsession, or are you contemplating a business? No, uh, I'm not contemplating a business. I did make a few um, boards of the bear boards just mm -hmm. um, for Strange Parts fans. Uh, you know, I've, I've framed them and then doing kind of a, a limited edition signed thing. But no, I um, have no interest in, in making kits. Or <laughs> so anything. we're not going to see you um, clutching this down by the river saying, no. my precious. No, 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 no. You're, Actually, you're you may see him clutching that down by the river saying, my precious. He's just not going to make any more preciouses That's for anybody right. else. <laughs> right, right, right. No, I, I, for me, this is first and foremost about storytelling. Right. It's, it's first and foremost about telling a cool story about an interesting project in an interesting place, right? So, mm -hmm. so a big piece of this is being in China in the markets and the entirely different way of doing engineering in China versus in the U.S. It's very from the ground up there. Mm -hmm. Yes. For example, the, there's a, a headphone company called Hi-Fi Man, and the person who runs it now is a PhD in like basically nano materials. Yeah. But he started out repairing broken electronics, and that's how yes. he sort of financed everything, yes. including his education. And that is and incredibly business. common in mm -hmm. Shenzhen. It's it's very much like people start out with cottage industries, mm -hmm. right, where they've got a tiny little business, and then they just grow and grow and grow. Like the the amount of opportunity there is so huge. You know, um, I, I did a tour of Shenzhen a while back, and the, the factories were interesting because yeah. you got to see how massive the tooling is to create these products. But when you started walking the back streets and you just found what was there, and you're just going, how is this possible? I mean, I, I can literally assemble my own insert name here yes. just from the stuff I grab off these parts bins. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it is kind of magical. I find phone parts like in the cracks in the sidewalk walking down the street, <laughs> literally. Uh, yeah. Did you find any screens that you could replace the cracked ones with? I generally, generally the, the ecosystem is pretty efficient about routing uh, things that have any value to a place where they can right. extract value out of it. So, I, no. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I gotta ask you though. So this took four months. Yeah. It took a couple of phones, a whole lot of screens, some parts, a lot of frustration. Yeah. Would you do it again? Knowing what you know now. Yes, absolutely. Okay, good, um, I love that. Absolutely. Will I do this project again at this magnitude? No, because I have so many other things I'm excited to go do. So um, I'm really excited to explore out of cell phones. I'm really excited to explore out of, outside of China. Um, Strange Parts for me is really about the intersection of like travel and adventure and technology and sort of finding these cool stories to tell, these cool adventures to go on. 
uh, on the fringes of our technological industrial world. So um, that's awesome. Now that's we awesome. know that you're you're going to take a look at the eight. You're going to yes. take a look at the ten. <laughs> yeah. What? is next for strange parts because it's obviously you, you've got a lot of heat right now you got to yeah. use it it's a good question i don't i i haven't chosen my next story yet to be to be tr totally truthful i have a long list of stuff i'm excited about but um what i will say is it's not going to be cell phones and it's not going to be china one word zune yeah yeah Chocolate bring it back zune. too bring soon it back. Man. bring it back yeah okay okay before we go though we have to actually see it. Do you want to actually see it? Yeah, I, I want to see this in operation. Just right, see. because we will sure have audience members who say this was all a sham. Yeah, right. Um, it's it's been my fear is that like there were so many hoaxes on YouTube of right. this when the, <laughs> when the iPhone Seven was first announced. I was worried that people would just think this was another another scam. And so um, I've been very eager to show it off to um, people that can verify. And this should give us the full operation as if you were just plugged into the dongle, because it, it is the dongle, but <laughs> yes, inside the case. Right, exactly. That's right. the right way to think about it. So that's the speaker. Mm -hmm. OK. And then and here are the headphones. So just to prove it, there we go. Yep. Oh, oh. Bluetooth on or off. <laughs> and you can push the buttons if you want. Oh, yep. Volume works. Oh, so full operation. I like this. Oh. Can I do a long a long press? Yep. Oh, Siri not, not, oh, not okay. connected. That, that was smart. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this I, I mean, I love it when a project works. But again, as you mentioned, you had that feeling early on in the project. Yes. <laughs> I had that feeling did months you, ago. Did you ever want to give up? Just say, oh, it's just too much. Absolutely. I you know, for me, by the time that I had everything in the case. I had everything but the screen on the phone. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. The only thing I'm lacking is I'm lacking a phone that I can say it works, you know? And so, yeah, at that point when I was starting to break screens and I was, I was just reaching this point where I didn't have anything more I could shave off. Right. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do here. Like, maybe this is just not possible. I like that. That's, that is the face of a man yeah. who is so <laughs> over it. <laughs> that was a pretty low point. Uh, that was a pretty low point. Um, I, it took a lot of willpower to actually turn on the camera and, and say that at that point because I was so low that I didn't want to talk to anybody. You said 10 screens. Uh, how many of those screens were broken because you threw it against the wall? None. Okay, I came all right. really close. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been speaking with Scotty Allen. Scotty, could you please tell our audience where they can find you, where they can find your channel, yes. and of course, where they're going to find your next project? Yes, absolutely. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel Strange Parts. You can go to youtube.com slash strange parts. Oh, this has been fantastic. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Yes. Thank you for sharing this tech and sharing a maker project that I think a lot of us wish we could do, but hopefully you're going to watch his his channel and realize don't do it. Yeah, a lot of us <laughs> wish someone else would do it for us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>